to spend even more money on them. They also shop at high-end stores such as Neiman Markets, Saks Fifth Avenue, and other high-end stores. And they live in urban places. So these are this is why we chose to, or we're going to choose to establish headquarters in New York and Los Angeles. These are people who live in metropolitan areas. We are also going to had to evaluate the market that we're going to enter. So as you know, the US is a developed country which comes with certain benefits as well as some, some potential threats. So the US, because of this, has a strong law infrastructure which protects our brand name and our brand product as well. This also has a firm, firmly established distribution system and communication system that will be to our benefit. And some cons are the high cost that this this comes with. So we do have high insurance costs as a result, which is a negative effect on our company. The baby products industry, as Anoop spoke to before, is still developing, is still highly fragmented, which means that we still have room to firmly establish Emma Yunga within this industry. Also, Emma Yunga has, to, has the ability to differentiate themselves among this fragmented market in order to establish a firm market share. In Sweden, every house in Sweden has an Emma Junga. This is a quote from the former JV partner that Emma Junga entered the US with in the 1990s. This is a common product, as even our professor said, <laughs> that she has an Emma Junga, and everyone in her family does as well. However, in the US, we can't see this as a viable option due to the increased price of production and transportation costs. We chose to mentor, enter as a result in a different way than they did previously. Previously, a JV was established called Vandex Emma Yunga Incorporated, which had exclusive marketing rights in the US. This started with one guy, Mr. Vandock, with a van full of Emma Yunga strollers going door to door selling these products. This expanded into a multi million dollar um, joint venture, and then finally was disbanded in the late 1990s. Some important factors that will influence our product or market entry decision is the quality of this product and the Swe Swedish production. These are two factors that the company must stand by and that are very consistent with the company's image. As a result, we establish um, headquarters in New York and Los Angeles and that have exclusive marketing rights in the US. This will be a multi-stage process. In the first stage, these headquarters will be established. This will entail a limited distribution area as well as a limited product line in order to establish ourselves firmly in the market. Next, in the second stage, we'll expand to high-end baby boutiques, and this will include a vetting system, which the headquarters will look at potential salespeople and decide whether their boutique is consistent with our brand. And we'll also introduce accessories to the U.S. market at this stage. In stage three, the U.S. collection will be expanded into more strollers, and in stage four, we'll open our own storefronts. This is way down the line, five to 10 years after our establishment. Our marketing mix plan. So our brand strategy is that we're not going to be selling a baby stroller, we're going to be selling a trend. And it's going to be focused on not selling, because, because the high cost of manufacturing and repair, we're going to have to limit the product line, and we're not going to sell it as limited product line, but as an exclusive line. And this is going to be geared toward our target market, which is basically based upon the sophisticated metropolitan parent who's located in the New York and LA regions. And these are people who value high technology and design and comfort, which our product will provide. And our product um, lines will be limited into five categories, city, three-in-one, sport, toddler, and twin. And the items that we selected for our product line are the Nitro City, which um, one of its key features is that it's narrow and easily accessible through city streets and good for transportation. And the second one we selected was the Mundial Duo Combi, which is one of our three-in-one strollers, and that includes the accessories such as the carry cot, which the baby can be transported from the car to the carriage without having to be opened up. The next selection we chose was the Sorox 2.0, which is our sports stroller, and one of its key features is that the handle switches so that you can move the baby away from the sun or the wind, and the next is the Scooter 2.0, which is our all-terrain stroller. And it can be used in the sand and the mountainous land and <laughs> etc. And the next one we selected was the Twin Nitro, which is very similar to the City Nitro. 
and that's just for two children in between the ages of within 18 months apart. And these all range from about 300 to over $1,000 in price. And another part of our strategy is going to be making sure that the quality of our service matches the quality of our products. And this is going to start with pre through post sales training. And one of our strategies is going to be to have a representative come from one of, from one of our Amayuga branches abroad and just teach the American sales representatives about what made their branch so successful, the strategies they used, about the baby carriage market in general, about the Amayuga market, etc. And another part of the training um, strategies are going to incorporate learning safety knowledge and each training representative is going to know in depth the American Society for Testing and Material Standards Manual, which basically continually updates any stroller hazards or any product recalls and such. And another part of service is going to be in-store service. And whenever a consumer comes in inquiring about purchasing a memory yoga, they will automatically get a private consultation in which um, the sales representative will see what needs they have and which product can best match those needs. And then from there, they'll be able to go through a test run with the, the stroller, and then they'll have they'll be described their post um, their after what after sale service they'll be provided with, such as the manual, which will have in depth um, product features and attributes and how to put together the product with both pictures and wording which will prevent any safety hazards from occurring again. As I spoke to before, this will be a multi-stage process when we roll out our product. We will start in high-end luxury brand stores such as Neiman Marcus, Saks Fifth Avenue, and other stores of that nature. <coughs> our displays will have a uniform look across all stores with clean Nordic design. Um, as you can see in this picture is an example of what our display might look like. And so we're gonna have a commonality among all our displays. Also, we're going to have trained salespeople, as Brittany spoke to before. And we're also going to have this air of luxury and exclusivity among all of our displays. Also, we're going to have a vetting system for potential salespeople in which we evaluate them on the basis of their financials and how much people spend per visit, how much uh, people generally, uh, generally spend on other products, and things of that nature. In terms of advertising promotions, we're choosing not to go with any traditional advertisements. So this will this fits with our brand of an exclusive luxury product. We will primarily be doing a push strategy, which will push our which will market our products on our distributors, who are then marketed to their their customer base. The Juvenile Products Manufacturers Association puts on trade fairs. This will be a primary uh, way of us entering the market and get, getting our product out there, teaching people about it. And also product placement is another a possibility which Bugaboo is very successful with in Sex of the City. Um, we will also provide our partners with material which they can include in their um, advertisements and materials. Finally, we think that in order to successfully roll out this plan, there's going to be, need to be a heavy primary and secondary research. And these resources can be anywhere from our salespeople who are actually in interacting day to day with our consumer who gets to know the needs of our consumer but in addition like secondary research such as parent blogs um, best baby bargains